Uh, how about this, though? How about with the politics? I mean, I don't, man, I hate this. People call it politics of the award ceremony. Uh, but in a call for women to be treated equally, um, how much trouble did anyone have? Because some of these some of these sex crimes have been grandfathered in, right? Where people we're examining the pasts of people at a different time in America, and we're examining it as if as if these things are happening right now. But to me, it was startling the juxtaposition of Kobe Bryant that happy at the center of that particular symbolic gala, and he's an accused rapist. And if you go read some of the details on that stuff. I mean, it'll, it'll, if those details came forth today in front of somebody in a way that we didn't know before that Kobe Bryant was in the middle of this, Kobe Bryant would get swallowed by that for the rest of his life. Instead, he's resurrected everything from there. And keep in mind, he, um, while not guilty criminally, his apology, his apology was something that in this day and age would not have been enough and and he would have been swallowed if you go, go in fact let me right. look up the apology so you, give me a second yes. so i could read you the words of the apology of, of the kobe bryant after the kobe bryant bryant rape allegations so while dan is looking that up i just like but to say that w- wouldn't you say it's a little bit different though i mean because he had his day in court quite literally and he went through it like dustin hoffman he never had to go through that, and that's why an 80-year-old Dustin Hoffman is a- uh, answering to things that you know a 30-something-year-old and 40-something-year-old Dustin Hoffman sure. did. But but what the thing with Dan's point is, if that scandal happened today, with the cl- the current climate, it doesn't matter whether he had a day in court or not, he would have been swallowed because it would have been just another name in this long rap sheet of guys who may or may not have done something. Let me read some of this to you. Yep. Let me read some so you could see what we're talking about. We're celebrating Kobe Bryant today, and this is a statement from Kobe Bryant, carefully manicured all those years ago, juxtaposed against everything you saw last night, hashtag me too. First, I want to apologize directly to the young woman involved in this incident. I want to apologize to her for my behavior that night and for the consequences that has she has suffered in the past year. Although this year has been incredibly difficult for me personally i can only imagine the pain she has had to endure i also want to apologize to her parents and family members and to my family and friends and supporters and to the citizens of eagle colorado i also want to make it clear that i do not question the motives of this young woman no money has been paid to this woman she has agreed that this statement will not be used against me in the civil case although i truly believe this encounter between us was consensual I recognize now. Let me. I'm sorry, I lost my place here. That the that this is not and did not view the incident the same way that I did. After the months of res, of discovery, listening to her attorney and even hearing her testify in person, I now understand how sincerely she feels that she did not comment to this encounter. Don Lebatard. See how quick he is at slithering around I'm things? Good. Like, yeah, you are good. You're, you yeah. are a master liar. Stugatz. Like, you are, you are a genius liar. You are like uh, the Einstein of liars. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN radio. ESPN radio is pre- presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save an average of $620. Guests on the Dan Lebatard show appear via the Shell Penzoil performance line. And now, your Sports Center update. The Blues will lose Jay Boomeister for the rest of the season with a hip injury. To try to fix his problem with pickoff throws, John Lester will try to intentionally bounce throws to first base during spring training. And finally, Top Gun 2 will reportedly start filming in July. For all the latest headlines and information, tune into Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. How about that? Lester. Getting paid twenty two and a half million dollars to throw grounders to first base, please. <laughs> All right, let me explain something. I don't even know if I should be publicly apologizing. If I am publicly apologizing, I should be doing so uh, not through laughter. But what happened at that at the end of that segment was a radio atrocity. Like uh, it, what happened at the end of that last segment was me careening <laughs> careening off of a ditch on an ATV. And I'm telling you, I have never felt older than I felt at the end of the last segment. I was an athlete realizing he's lost a step. 
I was the guy who I was the guy who thought that my mind, my sharp, sharp mind, would take me to places that my body betrayed me on, because my eyesight went in the middle of that. I couldn't <laughs> see the font that I was reading, and my lack of familiarity with technology didn't allow me in real time to expand the size of what it is that I was reading because I don't know enough about technology. And so, what you saw at the end of that segment, and I, as I was trying to do a serious journalistic societal point dismount is I stumbled into the pommel horse. <laughs> like I just, I went running and I'm like, I got this. I've done this a million times before. And then bang, right in my face, it's the pommel horse, the side of the pommel horse. Oh, uh, my, my favorite part about this is Dan in the break is overcome with emotion. He's trying to come up with the reason why, what happened. I, that guy's up. And then finally just said in a very meek voice, I need glasses. <laughs> I, I was horrified at the vulnerability of what happened to me in the last segment. I'm telling you, I felt so naked in front of you and the entire audience there because that's absolute. I realized in front of you, I need glasses. I realized in front of you, I've lost a step. I realized in front of you that I can't do this with the same vision that I used to. I'm Dwayne Wade. <laughs> It was, it was a real bold choice going to the Kobe Bryant uh, apology with 90 seconds I thought left I was in segment. my prime. I thought I was going up, alley -oop, baby. I'm going to sky over the rim. That was Dan clearing out the floor. That's and I right. got this. Out the way. <laughs> ben Simmons, don't worry about it. I got, I got Here this. Here comes the thunder. <laughs> but I, like, I was JaVale McGee. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I got this, I got this. The next thing I know, I've thrown the ball 40 feet into the stand. There's a Zach Randolph highlight from like when he was at the Knicks where he tries to clear out. I remember that. Over, it's one of the it, great, that, foot. it was one of the great, it was the play that I remember from Zach Randolph's Knicks career. Go YouTube it. More than any other play in Zach Randolph's entire yeah. Knicks career. Yeah, that was when Zach Randolph wasn't lovable. Remember at, that? At least it wasn't an incredibly sensitive topic. <laughs> I know, but I, I was, was a bold choice. A bold Mike choice. told me, Mike comes in during the break, swings the door open as I, cause he feels me vulnerable and broken. Oh, I need glasses and I'm behind on technology. <laughs> and Mike just comes in, swings the door open. He's like, bold choice with two minutes left on the clock going to the serious Kobe Bryant rape stuff. And then the door closes behind him with a click and I'm just left with my age, my vulnerability and my shattered soul. And my laughter. And you, that's right. And you, <laughs> that, that not helpful cackle in the background as, man, aging's a bitch. Oh, wait a second. Hey, oh, it's still morning time in San Diego, man. You can't be using those kind of words. Oh, God. But it's awful. Yeah. Is that's that a bad word? That's great producing. That on the radio? You can't say that. I, I thought you could say it. No, I thought you could say it. I'm quoting Betty Davis. Okay. I'm quoting Betty Davis. You want to quote George Carlin next? <laughs> oh. Not that there. Everybody loves her. How old is she? Old enough to she doesn't care whether she gets fined. Or well, suspended. I'm evidently that old now too, based on my vision in the last segment. Betty Davis died in 1989. Did you mean Betty White? Betty White is fine. Oh my God. That's like a ten dollar. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, mother, you, you mother, <laughs> like this is all falling apart for me in real time. You guys are seeing Willie Mays stumbling out of the batter's box. <laughs> I got nothing. I'm stumbling uh -oh. around. This is it. This is the end of the prime, the end of the career, really. I'm, I'm, I'm Muhammad Ali being beaten by Trevor Burbick in the Bahamas. This is Hakeem in a Raptors jersey. <laughs> I'm I'm falling apart. I did mean Betty White, but now I don't know if the quote "aging is a word I can't say" comes from Betty Davis or Betty White. But if Betty White says it, does it exonerate me? Is it a word I'm allowed to use if Betty White's allowed to use it? No, it doesn't exonerate you either way. But it, it exonerates you from the fine if Betty White said it. By the way, before you open that paper, do you need someone to come in here with a magnifying glass to help you read that? No, they've made the font plenty big for me. Thank you. <laughs> All right, just make it sure. Would you risk playing? <laughs> would you risk playing Gordon Hayward this season? <laughs> I mean, whoa, that's a turn from everything we were just doing. That's a sharp, sharp turn. Uh, here's my thing: if a guy is hundred percent, then he's a hundred percent. I don't understand these people who say, "Well, he's a hundred percent," but we're gonna sit him for the rest of the year anyway. Now he's not a hundred percent right now. Let me just say that uh, he's he's uh, was gonna be cleared to go on the road with the team as soon as he could 
begin to run without the use of the Alter G. Don't know if you know what Alter G is. It's this treadmill that inflates and allows you to run at less than your body weight, sixty percent, seventy percent, etc. They they said once you're able to run on a treadmill without the use of the Alter G, then you can go on the road and start working out with the you know trainers and the team. He still hasn't, so he's not traveling, so he's probably not going to play because he's just not ready. But if he were ready, I would play him. I don't think Betty White or yeah, Betty Davis said this. Wow. I mean, my this, God, Dan. Is this a famous this got, quote? I thought it was. I was quoting it as if it was a famous quote. But since we are seeing the inevitable lapse into my clear, obvious deterioration and senility, I thought I had a sharp tool, man. Oh, now I need people carrying my... My big word I can't say all over the place. Oh, wait, what are you doing? He's doing this. He keeps do- reaching for the popcorn at the same time as me to make this uncomfortable kind of connection, I guess. It's not uncomfortable for me. <laughs> Just read it. Oh. oh, a lot of writing on this one. Oh, boy. <laughs> With his Oscar win last night, did Kobe cement his legacy as the second best shooting guard what <laughs> I have a number one no one else has an Oscar what, what does the box plus minus say no uh, no is he the second best shooting guard of all time I guess I mean who else is in the no, because of the Oscar oh because of the Oscar no because he wasn't yeah. he wasn't before last night but because they gave him an Oscar what kind of question Hold is on. that what if what if, what if Dwayne Wade comes back and will wins multiple Oscars, real ones, not the short animation one that no one even knows what the other nominees are. I'm talking about a real Oscar, best picture, best director, best screenplay. Who from sports could win an Oscar? Like who is somebody? Ray Allen, what? Right, Ray Allen is saluted as as the. What are you looking at? Me Ooh, is, are you going to credit his acting in that movie? Because no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not what he's talking. No, no, no. Hold on a second. How many? How many athletes have? actually pulled it off in a meaningful role. Ray Allen is one of the few that's been asked to. Everyone else is asked to play themselves in in basketball movies or in cameos. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Is that the winner? Is that who you would point to and say that is the greatest athlete actor oh. of the uh, airplane of our time, Enter the Dragon? That well, Athlete actor? Uh, Jim Brown? Carl Weathers? Yeah. Carl Weathers? Jim Brown. Terry Jim Crews? Jim Brown. But how about now? Oh, okay. like, How about now? Who could Who could win? Who would actually well, for their for their acting abilities? Oh, Kyrie, mm. Uncle yeah. Drew, Uncle Drew coming out. Nate Robinson might steal the show though. Little Nate, uh, I- I'll tell you who might win, but not for acting. LeBron James, he might win a bunch of Oscars. Like he's, a producer, he's getting into the Hollywood producing thing. Well, what has he What has he done so far? He's done a game show. He's done. He's a part of that Survivor's Remorse Survivor's show. Remorse, he's got his yeah. fingers in a lot of man. We were talking about this last week. The idea, those guys must be having so much fun. Think about what's happening in the life of LeBron James. His guys, his friends, can get any meeting they want in Hollywood. These young black dudes that Phil Jackson insulted by calling a posse. He can get any meeting he wants in Hollywood. All they have to do is say, we'll bring LeBron. Yeah. Like yeah. they get into every room they want to get into with every pitch they want to get into because they can simply take their guy, their boy from childhood right. and be like, we'll get him in the meeting for you. He'll tell you what he's interested in. And then all of a sudden you're not only getting these meetings, you're getting all the options on what it is that you can do. Like no. you're choosing, you're not letting them choose you. You're going to choose them. Betty White never said no, this no, thing. No. I got to look it up. I'm going to look it up during the break, and I'll correct hey, all of this. You can't even see. I know. I'll get Mike to get me some prescription glasses or read it for me. I'm going to find this on the this newfangled internet thing.